everyone. Welcome to episode 25 of the D-Heart House podcast. My name is Alicia. I'm coming to you from Big Spring, Texas, and today is Friday, December 22nd, 2017. This is my podcast about knitting and sewing and spinning and crocheting and basically any kind of craft that a person can do because I'm obsessed. If you can't tell by looking behind me, I have a whole room for crafts. Not that I actually do my crafts in this, well, I sew in this room because this is where my sewing machine is, but I knit everywhere. Sidetrack. Okay, so today's Friday, December 22nd. Yesterday was the winter solstice, which is what the shortest day day of the like daylight hours shortest the day with the smallest amount of I'm gonna stop winter solstice was yesterday okay so I'm drinking some tea in a Christmas mug because it's the 22nd and Christmas is in three days and it doesn't it doesn't seem like it's only three days away, which is crazy. Anyway, you can find me on Ravelry as Alidi Knits 2, on Instagram as Read Knit Run. Uh, you can find my Etsy shop on Etsy, by the way. <laughs> it's called The Hard House Creations. And I have patterns up on Ravelry listed under D Heart House Designs. I also have a D Heart House Instagram account. And yeah. Facebook, D Heart House on Facebook. Man, gotta use that social media. Keep you guys updated. Love it. Okay. So. Let's start the episode with announcements. Because I kind of have a big announcement, you guys. Michael and I went away last weekend. Yes, today's Friday. A week ago, we went uh, on a trip. Michael booked us um, a hotel, and we went away and it was really unexpected in a good way. It was a surprise. Uh, Michael proposed. <laughs> so we're engaged now and it's really exciting. So yeah, I've never been engaged before. Uh, no, we haven't set a date. We just got engaged, you guys, like a week ago. Not even a week ago, because he proposed on Saturday. Was it Saturday? Yeah, it was Saturday. It was Saturday he proposed, and it was in the morning, and he got down on one knee, and it was the best thing ever, and we just spent the whole day just smiling and kissing and really happy, and it was great. Uh, and of course, to top it off, we went to see the new Star Wars movie, The Last Jedi, which was really good, and I won't say anything else about it, except that it was awesome. So, no spoilers here, but, you know, if you haven't seen it, you really should. Uh, it was great. So, and it was even better because I had this new ring to wear. You know, that just makes everything better. Anyway, no, he was so sweet and romantic and it was great. So anyway, that is new and I'm still getting used to wearing this thing all the time because now I hold my yarn in my left hand. <laughs> oh, first world knitting problems. So looks good, right? So I'm drinking tea. I've already had my two cups of coffee this morning, and I'm trying to cut back seat on break from school. 
I'll drink coffee all day long because I can because I'm home near a coffee pot and I need to um, not get too used to that because if I go back to work and I can't drink coffee all day long I'm gonna have like headache withdrawals withdrawal headaches so um yeah have my two cups switch to tea drink um, if you're a new viewer, thanks for dropping by. If you're a retur returning viewer, thank you for coming back. And I really appreciate you guys uh, subscribing. It's so awesome. Uh, so if you haven't already subscribed, please do. It's awesome. And um, it will help other uh, craft enthusiasts out there find this podcast a little easier. So I really appreciate your support and your feedback and everything. So I have a few more announcements to make and then we'll get into the nitty gritty goodness. So I have notes. I write them down on paper and everything and then I'd like look out the window trying to think of what to say. Okay. Oh yes, the Canuck Socks Knit Along is still going on until the end of the month. And I just have to say, someone has already knit two pairs of Canuck Socks. What? Sweet! Okay, so Canuck Socks is a free pattern on Ravelry listed under D Hard House Designs. Uh, for the Knit Along, all you have to do is knit a pair of Canuck Socks. I don't care what yarn you use, I don't care how much yarn you use, just use the pattern and post a picture when you're finished in the finished objects thread. And that thread is located in the D Hard House podcast group on Ravelry. So you have to be a member of the group in order to win in the knit along. Uh, and the winner will get to choose a sock size bag out of the D Hard House Creations Etsy shop and I will ship that off to the randomly chosen winner from the finished objects thread. Yay! Okay, so I will be closing out that thread on January 1st, 2018. So you have all the way through the end of December and a little bit extra time to post your picture or weave in the ends or whatever it is you need to do to finish your piece off. So, yay. Um, oh yes, another announcement. Uh, if you are watching this episode, <laughs> you're gonna get a coupon code for my Etsy shop. The coupon code is dheartpodcast15 and this code gets you 15% off your order until the end of the year. So December 31st, 2017, the coupon code will expire. So get your orders in before the end of the year. So that leads me into shop update. Okay, so what's new in the shop? Let me tell you. Not bags. Not stitch markers, but yarn. What? Okay, not from these shops though. I'm not. I'm not giving up this pretty, pretty goodness. I'm creating more pretty goodness. Okay. <sighs> okay. So I. Oh my gosh, hand dyed yarn is amazing. You guys are so so talented. And even the commercial yarns, oh, my goodness. Okay, who can resist gorgeous yarn as a knitter? Okay, so new in the shop are, well, right now I have one, currently right now as I'm recording this podcast, I only have the one listed. I, I want to get the second one up today. So. I'm currently knitting it so that I could get pictures of what it looks like knit up because it is hard to tell with some yarns how they knit up. So my first uh, colorway here is Baby It's Cold Outside, <laughs> just like the song. 
and I thought it was really appropriate for uh, the winter season. So it is a speckled yarn. So it has the natural base and it's speckled with a couple shades of blue and black. So here it is in my my messy cake because I've been I've been working this yarn. I'm trying to get the lighting right. Sorry. I'll put in pictures if this looks like crap. So what does it look like knit up? Well, it's speckled. And it's so pretty. Oh my gosh. Okay. There we go. Perfect. All right. It's speckled and I love it. It looks so good. Okay. So I have been all about the self striping yarn for socks. However, <laughs> dyeing self striping yarn is quite a chore quite a chore. Now, I'm not saying I wouldn't ever do it. I'm just saying oh, it takes a lot of work and that's a lot of investment. And when you spend that much time dyeing a skein of yarn, you know, typically it costs a little bit more because it does take so much more time to, to do. Anyway, but I just, oh, I have been watching the Legacy Knits podcast with Chelsea and Sue, and the two of them have a yarn dyeing business together, and they dye up the most beautiful variegated and speckled yarns. And I keep seeing their socks roll through with this variegated and speckled yarn, and I'm like, I want socks like that, I really do. And not just, not just like that, I want to dye the yarn for it, because it's so fun. It's so fun. Anyway. So, I knit up this, uh, well, I'm currently knitting up this first skein because I wanted to show you guys what it looks like knit up. Because I think that's really important, especially with the speckled yarn. Like, how speckly is it, you know? Oh, it's amazing. That's what it is, amazing. I don't have to toot my own horn, but I will. So here it is with a pattern, and the pattern is Hermione's Everyday Sock. And get it to focus anyway and then here it is in uh, stockinette why doesn't it want to focus anyway oh my gosh you guys it looks so cool anyway I'm really I'm so so happy so this is called baby it's cold outside all right it is a 7525 superwash merino and nylon. Okay. You get 462 yards in this 100 gram skein. And it's fingering weight yarn. Oh, it's so wonderful. Okay. So that's the first colorway. Baby, it's cold outside. It's a speckled yarn. And the second colorway that's hopefully going to go up in the shop today is, okay, and this is so cool because I have it all packaged up ready for pictures. Oh my gosh. Okay, now I already know the camera is not doing this justice, so I'm going to have some pictures rolling through. So this colorway I'm calling Winter Solstice because it was born yesterday on Winter Solstice. It is blue, teal, green, and just a touch of brown. And there's some of the natural poking through in some of the spots. So this is not going to be a speckled type of yarn. It's going to be more of a variegated type of yarn and I think it's gorgeous and I can't wait to knit with it. 
blues and greens. Oh my gosh. Okay. And it, can you get over the label? Oh my gosh. Isn't that just cute? Okay. Stop it. Okay, so D Hart House, right? And I wanted the label to be really simple so that the yarn would stand out. It's not really about the label. Oh my god. Okay. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay. So you can find these in the shop. And again, that is D Hard House Creations located on Etsy. And the search feature on Etsy is crap. Anyone will tell you it's crap. So instead go to Google or some other search engine and type in D Hard House Creations. Maybe also tack on Etsy and it'll bring you to the page. Um, I'll also have the link on the, the, not the link, because you can click on it in the screen. I'll put the uh, URL here on the screen, uh, and that will take you directly to the shop if you don't want to go through a search engine. Okay, so that's really exciting. Um, and Mary was um, seeing me dye the yarn and when after it was finished cooling uh, she was asking me you know well can I see it come out of the the pot when it's done and I was like sure of course and so we pulled it out and, you know the yarn had absorbed all of the dye so the water was clear and it she was just totally stunned by the process which is how I felt the first time I dyed yarn and I just I find it the coolest thing ever so I have a lot of fun. Winter solstice, baby it's cold outside, more colors to come in the future. Um, and yeah, check it out, get 15% off. Order before the end of the year, use the coupon code and get 15% off. Do it, do it. Okay, excuse me, sorry, I'm excited. Okay, so I don't have any new bags or stitch markers for the shop because I was dying yarn and getting engaged. Things were kind of busy. <laughs> oh, it's been a good week. Okay, let's, let's talk about finished objects, right? Yeah. So finished objects. I have a few things. And I need to get my sock blockers out. So first one is the one I'm wearing. This is my 11th place hat. So, let me take this off. So this is one of my designs that I'm going to be putting up in the Hard House Designs on Ravelry here soon. So it is a cabled hat. You do need a cable needle. Um, I am not comfortable leaving stitches just hanging there. So I use a cable needle. Some people are comfortable with it. I'm not. I'm not confident in my abilities to not drop that stitch any further. So anyway, cable, cabled hat with a ribbing and a fluffy pom-pom. Because why not? Oh my god, this is the cutest thing ever. All right. So this is knit out of, let me put this back on, because I have had hair. Okay. Oh my gosh, I love it. Okay. This is knit out of Knit Picks City Tweed DK Weight Yarn, and the color is Plum Wine. Yep. Oh, see the tweed? It's so cool. So it has dark and light, yeah, it has dark and light flex in the tweed. Oh my gosh, my lighting is crap today. So it's 
supposed to be cloudy like all day and it definitely is but I really wanted to see you guys again so um I'm recording anyway yeah anyway uh, so yeah the yarn is DK weight and I just love the tweed with this pattern I think it looks really really nice and the fluffy pom-pom honestly is one I ordered on Amazon I got a whole pack of them uh, and I think they might have shipped from like China or something I don't know they are faux fur they are not real fur uh, first of all no thank you to real fur second of all I'm allergic to like so many animals that that is my second reason for being like no thank you for real fur uh, so, yeah, first, animal cruelty, second, my allergies, third, washing the thing, right? Um, I just, I don't, I don't know. Anyway, faux fur, I'm not, I don't use real fur ever, uh, so yeah. And the size needles that I used on this hat are uh, US size 4 for the ribbing, which is just a one by one rib, I'll tell you that. Okay. Uh, US size 4 is a 3.5 millimeter. And then for the body of the hat with the actual cabling, I used a US size 6, which is a 4 millimeter needle. And I used 16 inch cable needles. So, no, nope, not cable needles. Wow, that's a long cable needle. I used 16 inch circular, one 16 inch circular needle to do the hat. And then I switched to DPNs on the decrease. So I did US size 4, 16 inch circular, then switched to the 6, 16 inch circular, and then DPNs for the decrease. So, yeah. I much prefer the circular to the DPNs, like for the whole hat. It was so much easier. I loved it. Okay, and the pattern again is called 11th Place Hat, and it will be up on Ravelry soon. So coming soon, 11th, 11th Place Hat. This is the second one I've knit. Um, I just typed up the pattern today. I need to get pictures and edit, and then it will be ready for posting. So. Okay, so other finished objects. Gosh, I need new sock blockers. Michael. His crafty self. He's also very crafty. So, uh, I am calling these socks my engagement socks. <laughs> because I was knitting them the weekend we got engaged. Yep, in fact, I started and finished them that weekend. Now, I started them before I knew we were getting engaged. <laughs> but I finished them after we got engaged. Anyway, my engagement socks to help me remember. I was knitting these the weekend we got engaged. So, here's some self-striping yarn. These socks are knit out of, so the main color is... There we go. Knit Picks Felici. And the color is Cheshire Grin for the stripes. The contrasting color for the toes, heels, and cuff is, of course, I didn't write it down, but I have the tag here Cloudborn Fibers. Their Merino Superwash Sock Twist. And the color is Charcoal Heather. Yeah. Okay, so the pattern. I did something a little different with these socks, and I kind of love it. I usually knit my socks cuff down. I knit both of these toe up. Look, they totally match my hat, that purple. <laughs> okay, I knit these toe up. I used a Turkish cast on. Did my usual toe. Amazing. Love it. Okay, 
uh, knit these magic loop one at a time and knit one sock completely then knit the other one. I use my Chow Gu US size 1 which is a 2.25 millimeter uh, needle. I had a 40 inch cable and I worked the socks magic loop. I worked my fish lips kiss heel one by one rib and then here's why I didn't like doing toe up socks before is the bind off at the top. Okay, The first toe up sock I knit is still in a basket behind me on the shelf. The bind off was too tight. I couldn't even put the sock on. I couldn't get it, I couldn't even get it over my foot, let alone up my leg. So I had to rip out the bind off, redo it with a stretchy one, and I hated how frilly it looked at the top. Because the ribbing cinched it in and then it went poof at the top. And I hated the way it looked. I also hated the way it fit. I also did a crappy heel on it, which is why I never knit the second one. But anyway, I found a different kind of bind off that's still stretchy but not as frilly as the other one I used. And what I'm going to do is put a link to the video in the show notes. All right. So the show notes are in the DeHart House podcast group on Ravelry, and I'm going to put a link to the video for the bind off that I used. I love it. Okay. So let me just show you. It works really well with a one by one rib. Yeah, that looks really good. So it's not like poof, at the top, you know? Oh, it looks so good. Okay. But it's still stretchy, nice and stretchy. Okay. Now, I don't want it to be too stretchy at the top because then the thing won't stay on my leg. So, anyway, I love it. I found this new bind off on YouTube. I found a nice video. And I tried it and I love it. And that Turkish cast on is so fun. I will also put a link to the video I watched for the Turkish cast on because she also shows you how to do the increases in a really easy way. Oh my gosh. Okay, so I'm going to have links to two different YouTube videos in the show notes in the D Hard House podcast group. So I knit these socks over a weekend, a whole pair. Crazy. Um, yeah, oh yeah, and the pattern is just stockinette. Just plain knit, 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 knit around. Okay. My next finished object is another pair of socks. Uh, but I didn't knit the whole pair. <laughs> I had one of the socks already finished. I just needed to finish the second sock. And I was starting to have second sock syndrome. I was starting to have it. And what I'm trying to do is clear out my works in progress. And this is a work in progress that's been languishing a little bit. So I finally finished off the pair. So, these are my Witch's Brew socks. These were meant to be my October socks. It's December. Whatever. So, I love this purple hat, let me just say. These socks match it. Okay, where's that purple? Yep. Okay. Crazy. So, witches brew socks. So, the yarn. First, we have the main color is Knit Picks Felici again. The colorway is witches brew. The toes, heels, and cuffs are are Knit Picks Stroll, and the color is Train Station Tonal which is a color I used in my sweater, my fade sweater. And yeah, I used, I'll just say, 
I used one ball of the Knit Picks Felici, 150 gram ball, to knit this pair. I also used 150 gram ball to knit this pair. Now in order to do that, the contrasting toe heel and cuff is needed to make the yarn go that far. Also, I don't like my socks to be that tall, like crazy tall up here. I say crazy tall because my calves are kind of big. Uh, I like to run and walk and my calves are athletic. <laughs> anyway, I would have to increase this out um, a few stitches to make it fit over my calf and I just don't really want to. It's going to want to scrunch down anyway to the thinner part of my leg closer to my ankle so I just don't knit them that tall anyway. So why not just use 150 gram ball, pop in a contrasting color for the toes, heels, and cuffs, and call it a day. So that's what I did. Now I do think these are a little bit shorter than the others. Little bit. Anyway, I just, um, that was what's, what was great about doing the toe up on these socks is that for the first sock I just knit um, I knit the whole foot so it would obviously fit my foot did the heel and then for the leg I kept weighing the ball of yarn until it got close to 50 grams and then that's when I started the cuff so when I knit the second sock I just tried to get the same measurements and I only had three grams left over of that main color so I did really well Anyway, so with these socks, here's what happened with these. Uh, I was trying to design a sock pattern using this yarn. Knit the whole dang sock and the thing didn't fit. Again, that happened. So I ripped the whole thing out, started over and said, whatever, I'll just do a vanilla sock instead of doing a pattern and just see the stripes. Anyway. So, the first sock is this one, and this one was knit cuff down. I did a twisted German cast on, uh, two by two rib, fish lips kiss heel, stockinette stitch, yada yada. Okay, so you can see the top of the cuff is very clean, stretchy, beautiful. Okay, now this second sock I knit after my engagement socks. So I was like, oh, I'm loving this toe up thing. So I knit these toe up. All right, so I did the Turkish cast on, the fish lips kiss heel, and then the new kind of bind off. I can't remember what she called it. She might have just called it ribbing bind off. I don't know. Anyway, but in person, I don't know if you guys can tell on the video. I can tell a difference in these, the top of the cuff. Can you tell? The German twisted cast on is much cleaner at the top. It's like a beautiful, beautiful straight edge at the top. Beautifully straight. And I know this is dark yarn, so it's hard to see. Okay. With this stretchy bind off, it's n okay not as straight. It's almost like a pico kind of thing, but not pico, but it's... Anyway, it's a little bumpy. Which is fine. I'm just saying it's not as clean. So if you're wanting to go for a clean cuff, I would start with the cuff. If that's really important to you, have a beautiful edge on your cuff. I would start there instead of ending there. Because the cast-ons, in my opinion, are cleaner than the bind-offs. Anyway. So I can tell, but I kind of wanted to test it. And also, that bind-off was not... I mean... It worked fine for the 2x2 two two ribbing, but maybe that's why it looks kind of bumpy. Is that in her video she does it with a 1x1 one one ribbing, not a 2x2. Two two. But I had to match the other sock. 
Because with this one, with the one by one, it's also really clean. Oh my God, I'm gonna stop talking about it, but see that? that beautiful edge, okay. Just saying. I was playing around with it and I wanted to, to share that with you. Um, I do not want the cuff of my sock to look like it's already stretched out. Okay, and I tried, what's it called, Jenny's Surprisingly Stretchy Cast Off or something like that. When I did it, it made the edge really frilly looking, like like the sock was already stretched out before putting it on, just the ribbing part at the end. I didn't really care for it, for my socks. And maybe I just did it wrong or put too much... Anyway... I need my ribbing to be tight, to actually hold on to my leg. So there. Okay. So I finished two pairs of socks and a hat. And they all have purple in them because it seems like it's been the year of purple. So, that wraps up finished objects. Let's talk about what's still on the needles, so works in progress. So for works in progress, I'll show you the, the thing I was already showing you earlier. So, I'm working on another pair of socks for myself, again. Both of these are for me. You guys, I got two more pair to put in my... That's insane. So, I have one sock finished. I'm working on the second sock. Oh, that fits so much better on this blocker. Yep, I was using too many stitches. So the first one is done. So this is knit out of D Hard House Yarns. And the color is Baby It's Cold Outside, which is a speck of yarn. Why won't you focus? And the pattern is Hermione's Everyday Sock, which is a free pattern on Ravelry. And I tried this pattern earlier this year and royally effed it up. I guess not royally, it was fine. It was salvageable, it just wasn't the pattern. Anyway, I'm doing it correctly this time and it actually looks good. Yeah, so uh, toe up, Turkish cast on, <laughs> fish lips kiss heel, one by one ribbing, and this new kind of bind off. And I haven't um, woven in my ends yet, so I still have this like gap up here. Anyway, oh my gosh, I love it. So I did do something different. I did notice, and I noticed it especially when knitting toe up. Yeah, because cuff down, yes, that's right. I'm gonna just keep talking to myself, okay? <laughs> Without actually finishing any of my sentences. So, with the fish lips kiss heel pattern, you trace your foot on cardboard. And I don't have my cardboard foot handy. <laughs> uh, so, when I was knitting these socks, I noticed that the foot part was actually loose on the cardboard foot. And the cardboard foot is a flat version of my foot, and it was loose on that. So these are actually kind of a little loose on my feet, and I prefer tighter socks rather than looser socks. So these are knit with 64 stitches on a US one. These are also knit with 64 stitches on a US one. Now again, I knit the second sock. I needed it to match the first one, so I wasn't going to change my, sti my stitch count halfway through. So for these, I was like, well, let's take out four stitches. So instead of 64, I'm doing 60. Look how much better it fits on this sock blocker. Let me get the other sock. It fits so much better. So I took out four stitches. And I did try it on my foot and it fits amazingly. 
Can you tell the difference? This is, yeah. Now this one has a pattern to it. So, I mean, it's a little different. Anyway, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Okay, so my speckled socks, you guys. I think these are my first speckled socks. I love them. So the first sock is finished. I have the second sock on the needles. Toe up, I love it. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Hermione's Everyday Sock is the pattern. So I've got the pattern on the top of the foot, but not on the bottom, right? Just plain stockinette on the bottom. Oh, it's so cool. Okay. Yeah, it's cool. So I love the Chow Goo needles. I've tried Chow Goo, Knitter's Pride, Knit Picks, and I think that's it. I love Chow Goo. Love it. So these are US size 1, which is a 2.25 millimeter needle, 40 inch cable, and I'm knitting it Magic Loop. And I'm in love. It's so good. It's so good. And I have a tent stitch marker on there. <sighs> yep. I really want to go camping. A little too cold. Okay, so that's one thing I'm working on. I want to finish that sock. And it's just really nice to have um, socks on the go. I took it to the restaurant last night. I'll take it over to my sister's house for Christmas. I'll just work on them till they're finished. My second work in progress is living in my... I have to look up, I have to look at her tag every time. Woolridge Designs bag. She has a shop on Etsy. And what's living in here is my shawl. So this is my meandering Malabrigo shawl. And here's more purple. You ready? So, yeah. I'm telling you, it's been the, the year of purple. I'm going to have to count how many of my projects had purple in them this year. So this is the Meandering Shawl by Stephen West. And it's been a while since I showed this to you guys, so I'll whip out the pattern. It's so cool. So this is a brioche shawl. And it is a paid for pattern, it's not free. So I won't tell you any more than that. And I'm currently dealing with a tangled mess, but <laughs> there are so many stitches on this needle. It's so cool, you guys. Yeah. So this is a, like I said, a brioche pattern. So this is the dark side, if you will. This is the light side. So brioche knitting creates this reversible fabric. It's gorgeous. And the meandering part is this zigzag center line down the shawl, which is really cool. It gives it just enough interest to make this less boring, but not so interesting that a beginner can't handle it. Because I was brand new to brioching when I started this shawl, and I love it. I love it. I'm not having a hard time following it. So the two yarns are, so this one is Malabrigo in their sock base. And the color is Anniversario. It's predominantly purple, but it has all colors in it. Blue, green, pink, yellow, just orange. It's so pretty. And the light color is this, which is dye is cast yarns. 
and the color is Rainbow Storm. So this is predominantly gray, but it's speckled with yellow, blue, and pink. Currently all you can see is yellow. That's funny. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so Malabrigo and dye is cast. Yarns in Anniversario and Rainbow Storm. And it's so fun. Okay, so I have about... I don't know how many more rows, but I'm getting close to the border section, which is really exciting, because that means I'm almost finished. So let me just show you another picture and not show you the pattern. Yeah, so I'm about here. So I'm gonna start doing this border here soon. <sighs> Which should be interesting and perhaps confusing. So I will keep you posted. But I would really, really like to finish this in 2017. <sighs> yeah. So here's what's funny is I keep my works in progress. If I'm not currently working on it, like in the living room while watching TV or something, then I will keep it here in the craft room in its bag. Oh my gosh, look at that color. I just have to show you this. That Malabrigo is so rich with color. <sighs> okay, so I keep my projects in this room, in their bags, lined up on the couch here. And you'll notice I don't have many bags over there. So if I put this sock in its bag, one of my D Art House Creations bags, okay, with the snaps. Add three. Oh, plus my scrappy blanket, right? Which is just a pain to work on now. But anyway, my scrappy blanket is there. And this is a shawl I've already finished that I wear a lot. So I only have four things still going that I've started in 2017. Nope, I started that scrappy blanket in 2016. I lied. Okay. Whatever. So, I have socks, which will be no problem to finish this year. A shawl, which I can, I can also finish, I just need to make sure I do a little bit each day. And then in this other bag is Michael's sweater, where I knit almost the whole sleeve and turns out it's too big, so I have to rip out the sleeve. Do that again. That's not going to get finished this year. But I would love to have Michael's sweater be the only bag sitting on the couch when the new year rolls in and I'll work on his sweater before starting too many projects. Yeah, because that shawl is now a big project. So it kind of sits up there with the sweater and waits because I don't really want to work on a big project. Anyway. <sighs> okay. So. That's one of my goals, is to finish the Baby It's Cold Outside Socks, finish my Meandering Malabrigo, and not start anything new, so that Michael's sweater is the only rollover from 2017 into 2018. So in 2018, I can start new projects, but not until the new year rolls over. Okay, so I would like to have, I think, the next episode will be like a year in review episode. Uh, for those of you who use Ravelry for keeping track of your projects, uh, maybe you didn't know this, but Ravelry can keep track of how much yarn you've used throughout the year or, you know, whatever tags you put on your projects. So I would like to do a year in review episode um, next time. 
and just talk about the projects I've worked on throughout the year. Um, the good, the bad, the ugly, the yardage, and, um, you know, things I've learned. So I don't know if that's going to be separate, a separate episode from the regular, or if I'm just going to, you know, show you these couple things I finished and then go into, anyway, I'm going to have a year in review episode <laughs> next time and it should be pretty exciting. So, uh, Merry Christmas. It's coming up really soon. Um, happy Hanukkah, happy Kwanzaa, happy Festivus, happy new year. I'm hoping to get the next episode out before the new year, but no promises. Something else might come up. I don't know. Anyway, uh, Michael's coming home from the store. This is perfect timing. I'll see you guys next time. Happy knitting. Bye guys.